Pale Luna, Luna smiles, smiles wide. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Want to hear something scary? What better way to celebrate Snarl's new gaming channel, Sleetrix, than with a story about a video game with a deadly secret? This is the story of Pale Luna by Ed. In the last decade and a half, it's become infinitely easier to obtain exactly what you're looking for by way of a couple of keystrokes. The internet has made it all too simple to use a computer to change reality. An abundance of information is merely a search engine away, to the point where it's hard to imagine life is any different. Yet, a generation ago, when the words streaming and torrent were meaningless, save for conversations about water, people met face to face to conduct software swap parties, trading games and applications on Sharpie labeled five and a quarter inch floppies. Most of the time, the meets were a way for frugal, community minded individuals to trade popular games amongst themselves. However, a few early programming talents designed their own computer games to share amongst their circle of acquaintances, who in turn would pass it on until it had its place in the collection of aficionados across the country. Think of it as the 80s equivalent of a viral video. Pale Luna, on the other hand, was never circulated outside of the San Francisco Bay Area. All known copies have been long disposed of. This fact is attributed to a number of rather abstruse design choices made by its programmer. Pale Luna was a text adventure in the vein of Zork and the Lurking Horror, at a time when said genre was swiftly going out of fashion. Upon booting the program, the player was presented with a screen, almost completely blank, except for the text. You, you are, are in, in a dark, dark room. room. Moonlight, Moonlight shines, shines through the window. The window. There, there is gold, gold in the corner, the corner along, along with, with a shovel and a rope. rope. There, there is, is a door, door to the east. east. Command? Command? So began the game that one writer, for a long out of print fanzine, decried as enigmatic, nonsensical, and completely unplayable, as the only commands that the game would accept were pick up gold, pick up shovel, pick up rope, open door, and go east. The player was soon presented with the following. Reap your reward. Pale Luna smiles at you. You are in a forest. There are paths to the north, west, and east. Command. What quickly infuriated the few who've played the game was the confusing and buggy nature of the second screen onward. Only one of the directional decisions would be the correct one. For example, a command to go in a direction other than north would lead to the system freezing, requiring the operator to hard reboot the entire computer. Further, any subsequent screens seem to merely repeat the above text. Worse still, the standard text adventure commands appeared to be useless. The only accepted non-movement related prompts were to use gold, which caused the game to display the message, not here. Use shovel, which brought up, not now. And use rope, which prompted the text, you've already used this. Most who played the game progressed a couple of screens into it before becoming fed up by having to constantly reboot and tossing the disc in disgust, writing off the experience as a shoddily programmed farce. However, one young man by the name of Michael Nevins decided to see if there was more to Pale Luna than what met the eye. Five hours and 33 screens worth of trial and error and unplugged computer cords later, he finally managed to make the game display different text. The text in this new area read, Pale Luna, Luna smiles wide. There are no paths. Pale, Pale Luna smiles wide. The ground is soft. Pale Luna, Luna smiles wide. Here. Command? It was another hour still before Michael stumbled upon the proper combination of phrases to make the game progress any further. Dig hole, drop gold, then fill hole. This caused the screen to display. Congratulations! After some deliberation, Michael came to the conclusion that the numbers refer to lines of latitude and longitude. The coordinates led to a point in the sprawling forest that dominated the nearby Lassen Volcanic Park. As he possessed much more free time than sense, Michael vowed to see Pale Luna through to its ending. The next day, armed with a map, a compass, and a shovel, he navigated the park's trails, noting with amusement how each turn he made corresponded roughly to those he took in-game. Though he initially regretted bringing the cumbersome digging tool on a mere hunch, the path's similarity all but confirmed his suspicions that the journey would end with him face to face with an eccentric buried treasure. Out of breath, he was pleasantly surprised by a literal stumble upon a patch of uneven dirt. 
shoveling as excitedly as he was, it would be an understatement to say that he was taken aback when his heavy strokes unearthed the badly decomposing head of a blonde haired little girl. Pick up gold. Pick up rope. Use rope. You've already used this. this. Use gold. Reap your reward. Dig hole. Drop gold. Then fill Hail hole. Hail Luna smiles at you. Michael promptly reported the situation to the authorities. The girl was identified as Karen Paulson, 11. Reported as missing to the San Diego Police Department a year and a half prior. Efforts were made to track down the programmer of Pale Luna, but the nearly anonymous legal gray area in which the software swapping community operated inescapably led to many dead ends. The rest of Karen's body was never found. Like this video if it gave you the chills, and don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and our new gaming channel, Slaytrix. And if you dare to follow me, my links are in the description below. Until next time, sweet dreams.